Um, I portray a character by the name of uh, Colonel Packer. Uh, he's a um, helicopter commander of a, of a unit of guys. Um, at the end of the Vietnam War, everybody's headed home. His soldiers are going home to their families or to their lives or new jobs. And he's trying to figure out you know, where he's going to be or what he's going to do, um, feeling kind of uh, cheated because you know, they're saying we lost the war. He feels like the war was just abandoned. And he gets an opportunity or a request to take these scientists for some kind of scouting mission, more or less a babysitting job that he figures one last chance for he and his guys to fly together. So they take him to this place, Skull Island, and out of nowhere they get attacked uh, by this giant gorilla. Uh, and he loses some men, which uh, sends him into battle mode. So he's pretty much looking at this thing that's declared war on he and his guys, and it's a war that he plans on not losing. I think it, you know, it feels familiar to them. Um, I guess most people at some point in their lives have seen the black and white 1933 version, which is sort of like the first time you had something that was familiar but not familiar. You know, everybody knows what a gorilla is, but nobody imagined a gorilla that large. I guess for some people, you know, like me when I was a kid, I just assumed when gorillas grew up, they grew up to be that big. So the reality of that is, you know, kind of acceptable for a lot of people in a way, you know, that they can grow that big and climb a building and knock airplanes out of the air. Uh, and I guess as a kid for me, you know, we always imagined, you know, running away from something that big or trying to figure out how to defeat it. Uh, and over the years, as the story comes back, you know, people get the same thing, well, how, how are they gonna do it now? Because they can do it better or it's in color or it's, you know, larger or it's whatever. And now we have what, theoretically is uh, an origin story of a place where something like that, you know, was hatched and grown and whatever else lives in that particular place that might be just as dangerous or just as large. So, you know, the mysterious aspect of that is always intriguing to an audience, we hope. I think so. And how would you describe Skull Island? Hot buggy. <laughs> Uh, damp, wet, uh, it's got a lot of different kinds of terrains. Uh, you can go from tropical rainforest to a bamboo forest to open stretches of grassy plains to really uh, bizarre looking mountainous uh, protrusions coming up out of lakes and oceans and bodies of water. Hmm. So, also, great ensemble cast. I asked John Goodman about the cast, and he said it's not a group of people that you would want to whine in front of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to see how, how, did you spend a lot of time with these other um, actors? Yeah, we spent a lot of time sitting around in tents waiting on them to set up the next shot and doing this, that, or the other, talking about this, or walking and walking and walking and just stopping and saying, okay, cut. And we just plop down this long grass. Hopefully we weren't sitting in the middle of an ant hill or something more dangerous in Australia, like a brown snake patch or whatever. Uh, look at, occasionally you look around and you go, oh wow, look, kangaroos. Are they kangaroos on Skull Island? You can't use this yet. So, um, we relaxed together and, you know, lamented sometimes looking at our feet and like, geez, we've been walking for like eight days and we haven't said a word. What are we doing now? Yeah, so we we grouse together, we laugh together. It was fun. And what do you hope that people will take away from this film? It's it's a great film, uh, but you know, I think there's a could you get a little message out of that? Well, I mean, it's essentially an escapist entertainment film. Yeah, there's an environmentalist sort of message there that you know 
there are certain things we shouldn't bother or we should try to preserve. Uh, there's the, yeah, we're man and we're intellectually superior to everything out here, but that doesn't mean we have to defeat everything out here to prove our superiority. Um, there's the uh, leave well enough alone message. <laughs> um, and I, I guess there's just the, the aspect of there still should be films that we can go to that allow us to escape the 24-7 deluge of news, whether it's good, bad, or otherwise, and I think this is one of those kinds of films. I agree, it was awesome. Thank you. <laughs>